welcome to the Jennifers. <laughs> Cue music. Thank you for returning, for being here for the first time. We're happy to have you. Thank you for coming back. And for you who is new, who are new, <laughs> oh goodness, I don't know anything about grammar. For all of our new listeners. It sounds good though. For you who is new, welcome to do. <laughs> we are back at it with episode two of the Jenniverse. I'm Enna. I'm Jill. And, and together, together we're Jenna. Jenna. We'll get that better Yeah, next we'll time. make it. We'll get it one day. But it doesn't matter. You're here. Let's just get into it. You can follow us on socials at the underscore Jenniverse on TikTok and Instagram. And you can also follow me at park underscore slope underscore arsonist. You'll keep find my Instagram if you really want to. Let's get into sure, it. Sure, yes, yes, yes. Slay. All right, so we are going to kick off the second episode with 20 questions right off the bat. Yeah, let's just get into it. Let's it's... get into it. The power is off right now for eight hours a day, and I'm thinking of moving. What country should I move to? Hello from South Africa. I think you should move to the United States. America. Oh, oh. Is that the bald eagle? Yes. That's the only one I could even suggest to you mm -hmm. because I'm like an untraveled country bumpkin. <laughs> so I'm the last person you should ask. You've been to tons of places. I have been to tons of places. I've been all over Europe and I've been to Japan. And you still think, and America. I, I still think, America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, America is just like, it's a really big country. So like, I feel like a lot of countries are smaller. Mm -hmm. So like- You I'm, get locked in. You get locked in. But in America, there are so many different climates, so many different like, parts of the country to see. It's like a continent in its own, you know? So that's why I recommend America. It's like, there's a lot of variety in the country. I want a country that offers a lot. And America offers a lot. Yeah. D desert. Desert. Beach. Beach. Mountain. Mountain. Field. Field. Ohio. That's what I'm saying. Think about Ohio. I'm gonna bring it up. I didn't, for the record, I didn't bring that up. But think about it. Um. So the next question. My filthy rich boyfriend won't let me talk to guys wear anything low cut, post photos where I look good. The type of rich seen in movies, but showcases extreme anger at the mention of a guy friend. Dump or no? I mean, you should dump him. This yeah, like, absolutely. This sounds like soon you're gonna be wearing like, I don't know, a leash? All the money in the world cannot buy your freedom and it does not sound like <laughs> yeah, you have freedom. The no talking to men, how do you operate in the world? <laughs> the mailman says hi and you're like, absolutely not, my boyfriend might see me. No, this is like a hostage situation. <laughs> dump. Dump. You can make your own money. Right, get him to invest money in your future and, and then, then dump, dump him. <gasps> That's uh... a good idea. All right, next question. The person I'm dating lost their job. Should I end it with them? Stop. You're being bad. That's bad. No. You're being a bad person. I'm gonna play the devil's advocate. <laughs> Stop. Not to be a white man, but I will play the devil's advocate. Maybe the relationship <laughs> is built on this person having a job. Some oh, relationships true. True. have he, like a contract. Yeah, true. Well, I guess, yeah, if it's a contract. Personally, if I he, think if you're like even thinking about this, like it sounds like the relationship should end in general. Like not even just for the job, but <laughs> it just sounds like I you're done. I wish you had a different reason. <laughs> Choose a different reason besides that one. Just be like, I don't like him. I never did. Now that he's around all the time because he's unemployed, I really realize it. Yeah, I think you should just, yeah, probably end it. That's my personal opinion. It sounds like you're already over the relationship. And they deserve someone better, honestly. They're kind of like kicking them while they're down. Like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next question. How do I lose the crushing feeling of guilt and shame that I get from masturbating? Was raised Catholic and oh. very serious about it until age 17. I know, the question started very heavy. <laughs> it's okay, it's a Catholic thing. Yes. Which I am qualified to speak That's on. That's why I brought this up. Okay, like, you okay. You have the advice. Mm, how did I not feel bad about masturbating? Remember that Catholicism isn't real. It's not real. You just have to remember that. It sounds simple, but it's hard. I almost think you should be extreme. <laughs> Go all the way. So when you get back to the place you're at, it doesn't seem that crazy anymore. You know what I mean? Jerk off like 20 times a day till your meat is raw. 
And then when you get back to jerking off normally, you'll be like, Jesus couldn't be mad at this <laughs> if he didn't smite me the way I was acting. <laughs> so yeah, maybe just go all the way. Then when you get back, you couldn't even imagine that Jesus would be mad about it. As someone with religious guilt, not Catholic guilt, I think Catholic guilt is a different breed of guilt. <laughs> Y'all be cat hit, cap whipping each other. I mean, I overcame it. I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but as someone with religious guilt, I feel like it's just important to remember that there are worse sins. Oh, I yeah. know that the Bible likes to like equate all sins, but like there are way worse sins. Like, yes, I'm flicking my bean, but I'm not <laughs> killing a man. I'm flicking my bean, but I'm not flicking it with someone else's husband. But yeah, don't worry about it because you're not hurting anybody. All right, next question. Am in a long distance relationship with a guy I met traveling. My family don't know and can't find out as they are super religious and I live at home. I love and miss him. Can we ever make this work? It's good that he's far away. Let's just first say that. For your extremely religious family, this is a good setup. I personally think like you can make this work. You just have to be able to make a list of what you're willing to sacrifice to make it work Definitely. because like are you willing to risk the confrontation of your family some people are not some people they don't want to have that confrontation with their family and if that's the case if that's not something you're willing to risk then maybe you should end it but like if you're willing to like put yourself through that discomfort then the relationship is worth it for you so make a pros and cons list of what you know what the what are the pros of telling your family what are the cons of you know telling your family etc cetera, etc cetera. and then i feel like in there you will find your decision once you decide they're worth it you have to come out and tell everybody or it's just never yeah it's never gonna work yeah um so what's the best way to hide things from your parents when they're gonna snoop through your room and all of your drawers hide it at your friend's house <laughs> yeah I, someone's got parents that aren't paying attention that are at work all the time put your weed the hair <laughs> That's a good idea. I think basically make an observation in your house. Look at the things that are have been moved the least. Oh, what's the dustiest the place? The dustiest place. And there is your hiding place. Clearly, no one's paying attention to it. No one's moving it around. And if all else fails and you're really uncomfortable with that, hide it in the vents. Hide it in the vents. Hide it in no the vents. No one is cleaning their vents. Asthma is at an all-time high in America. <laughs> Just hide it in the vents. That's good. Hide yeah. it in the vents. Hide it in the vents. Don't worry about it. Hide it in it. someone else's room. If that it's found. Plant the evidence. Plant the evidence. Set up one of your parents. Like your dad smoking the mm -hmm. weed. They'll never even bring it up to you. Exactly. Ooh. I like how you Pit the whole family against, against each, each other. other. Ooh, split it up. Everyone gets a little down Everybody has weed. a nug under their pillow. <laughs> except for you. Including you. Obviously, you can't include oh, yeah, yourself I guess, yeah. in that way. Oh, this if is everyone a... has a nug. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> equally guilty. Exactly. Level the playing field. Yes. Split it amongst your family. Put a condom in everyone's room. <laughs> That's like a speed run of a divorce. <laughs> All right. Um, how do I accept being ugly? There's an episode of SpongeBob for this. <laughs> I am ugly, and I, you know? Yeah. Well, and also you got to remember, this is something I think about all the time when I feel ugly. It's like, everybody's ugly. Everybody poops. Everybody finds something weird in their belly button every few years, weeks, months, whatever. Like, everybody's just a disgusting animal. I think what's really important here is just, like, take care of your basic needs. Like, you know, showering, like, clean hair, whatever, whatever. Make sure that that's taken care of. That usually, like, affects how people treat you directly and also it can affect your self-esteem a lot and then focus on what you're good at you know what do your friends like about you why do you have friends why are people around you if if you don't have any of those just what do you enjoy doing and just focusing on that you're gonna feel better about yourself people are horny for skills so just become really good at something yeah definitely a skill will make you hotter almost instantly and when all else fails cover up your mirrors <laughs> turn the mirrors around, around. <laughs> all right next question how do i cope with having annoying co-workers who are so sheltered and normal that it kind of comes from 
that it com- kind of comes full circle and is weird again. Get noise blocking headphones <laughs> and just live your own life inside of your own skull. That's what I would do. Um, you just because you work with someone does not mean you need to talk to them. That is that might be controversial to say, but I live by that <laughs> doctrine. Too. I am a high by a smiling conversation and I just keep it short and simple. My coworkers, do they even know I have a podcast? No. no. <laughs> Why would they know that about me? Why would they know any they would never know that I own this shirt. They couldn't imagine a world. <laughs> In life, I go by Jill. At work, I go by Jillian. That's a different person. Mm -hmm. Make a new name. Mm -hmm. Instead of Lauren, you're (laughs) Lauren. And you agree with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Just consider that. Um, Next question. Mm. How do I tell a long time and distance friend that I might be in love with her? Oh my God. Well, are you sure? This is another (laughs) like... Jerk off and reassess the vibes. (laughs) You might just have a moment of weakness and you should like jerk off at home, make out with someone who's not separated by a distance and then decide if you're still in love with your best friend. And I think it's important that you sit down and you think about, do I know the difference between platonic love and romantic love? Because a lot of people confuse the two and it's very, it's very important to like sit there and do the work and realize that like, this is what platonic love feels like and this is what romantic love feels like. And then you can better um, prioritize which of those feelings you are having for your friend. And it's likely just platonic love, really. But if it is romantic love and you might be in love with them, just access what do you have to lose with yeah. confessing this. Because this is someone that's like a friend but it doesn't say best friend, so... so yeah, you have plenty of friends. You plenty you of friends, well so you it. might as well go for it. And if but... they reject you, they're far away, so it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah. If it's real, go ahead and tell them. Life is short. <laughs> but make sure it's real. <laughs> All right, next question. How do I marry rich? Hang out where rich people are and look hot. Find a man named Richard. <laughs> tell him to shorten his name. Congratulations, you married rich. Do you think I would be single yeah. and poor if I we, knew the answer to this goddamn we, question? Do you think we'd have a podcast if we were married to two rich people? No. So let us know when you figure it out. Yes. DM us. <laughs> How can I eat sushi with without at least seven chopsticks? Seven? Just use your hands. You're welcome. <laughs> um, is it gay to be gay? Yes. Yeah, but that's a good thing. Being gay is good. If I toss my leftover tea in my plant, is that plant cannibalism? Oh, wow. Is it the same species? Like, are you watering your green tea with your, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. in the same way that we as mammals eat other mammals. Is Just make it, sure it's not the same. Yeah. Then it's not, it's not cannibalism. So There's bigger things to worry about. There, there are bigger things to worry about. How do you get over a crush slash infatuation with a person who is so awful and hates you, but the chemicals in your brain are telling you to lick the inside of their mouth. I like that. (laughs) Horniness is beyond logic. Horniness makes you do things you never would logically do, and I don't know. Wow, that's brave of you to say you don't know. I don't know. Personally, I think, like, I would say to anyone with a crush that they're trying to get over, just... Get a new crush. Yeah. Go to a new situation where you can meet new people and then develop a new crush. And when you have a new thing to fixate on with your brain, that helps you get over the old thing or at least like taper down on the old thing. Because this is concerning. This sounds like... Yeah, I guess they did say the word hates you. That's bad. That's bad. That's not sexy. That's bad. I'm thinking of someone that like has a hobby I don't like. (laughs) So yeah, if they hate you... Don't. Yeah, work on your self-esteem. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe, maybe talk to a therapist. Or I mean. We could all use a therapist. Yeah, everybody needs a therapy session <laughs> in this wild world. But yeah, they hate your guts. Maybe don't. And yeah, get another crush. So many problems in this world could be solved if we all just jerked off and then made out with someone who we're not thinking about. <laughs> How to not fart during sex. That is hard. It really depends how you're having sex, and it depends if you mean a butthole fart or 
a vagina fart. I don't know what holes you're working with in this scenario. But what you could do if it's a butthole fart is before, go into the bathroom, get down on the ground, and, like, put your head on the ground and your ass up in the air and release all the farts. You know what I mean? Awaken them yourself and let them be free before the event is the only thing I could think. But, like, a vagina fart? The... Like, to have penetrative sex is to pump air into a vagina. If it farts, that has nothing to do with me. My vagina never farts when only I'm messing with it. This is, a vagina fart is not your fault. It's their fault. Whoever did it to you. I, 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 I would repeat the same thing, so. How do I get my friends to stop liking Harry Potter? It's almost 2023 and there are other books. That's bad. That's bad. They still they still like Harry Potter despite all the years. The, and the transphobia. They're like a Harry Potter adult. Um, you're gonna have to make new friends. <laughs> that is <laughs> too far. You're gonna have to make new friends. Yeah. Um, I just found out my ex of four years has been cheating on me the whole time. Should I report his tax evasion to the IRS? <laughs> Absolutely. Your ex of four years has been cheating on you the whole time. The least you could do is report them to the IRS. The I least. think the least you can do this. That he's lucky. Because also when someone cheats on you, they're not just fucking with trust and your relationship, whatever. They're fucking with your sexual health. Mm -hmm. They're fucking other people and you don't know that. So you're not taking the precautions that you would if you knew that. Mm -hmm. So they're gambling with your health. So you can gamble with their taxes for yes. at least one year. Absolutely. Also, they're cheating on they're cheating on all of us. <laughs> they're not paying their taxes. We, and exactly. That pothole has that motherfucker's name on it. Exactly. Exactly. Report them to the IRS. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Last question. Um, how to be friends with a guy that has a crush on you? He's not my type. I think this is touching on another theme that we've talked about earlier here on the podcast, and it's that. Make new friends. <laughs> Literally. I'm so sorry, but sometimes if if something like this is really making you uncomfortable, it's unbearable, there are 8 billion people on this planet. Make a new friend. Hang out with your grandma. Like, I doubt you're hanging out that much, and if you are, that's bad. Hang out with your cousin, you know? See what your elderly neighbor's doing. Ask him if he wants to get dinner. Get like into a new scene. Meet new people. There are, you just, sometimes you just need to know that certain friends make you uncomfortable and you need to move on from it. That's not your friend. And even if you were able to become friends with him, he's never going to be friends with you. He's going to be horny for you. Make a new friend. Let him free to go be horny for someone that's going to be horny back. And make a friend that can actually give you genuine friendship. Retweet. <laughs> they used to say that, right? Remember we used to say, just retweet. Sure. Did they ever do that for you guys in um, Ohio? No. We were saying like PC for PC. Oh. Picture comment for picture comment. Oh. That's a Never nice mind. Space. We used to walk around and be like retweet with things that we agreed with. <laughs> Maybe it's just a Delaware thing. Oh. Oh. Oh, we're debating a new segment. This segment, we were sent some very interesting secrets by yes. you guys. We didn't tell you what we were going to do with them, but we're going to play a little game of fuck, Mary kill with your secrets that you've sent in. Mm-hmm. And the fuck, marry, kill is would we fuck, marry, or kill the person based oh, yeah, on their yeah, secrets. Yeah, not the Just, secret. We're well, talking about you. You. <laughs> yeah, you would who we has fuck, marry, kill you. you. All right. So, I, I, this is in the voice yeah, of the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You're talking as the person we might potentially fuck, marry, kill. Yes. I, when acting as an elected official slash ballot counter, once faked election results to elect the candidate I wanted. Fuck, marry, kill. I personally would fuck this person. I was going to say, it sounds kind sounds of sexy. sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of sexy. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind it's of kind a hot It's kind of sexy, crime. yeah, to be like, I stuffed the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't marry you. But maybe you could stuff my ballot just once. Okay, I was there to eat pencil shavings in elementary school, and I actually liked it. Pencil shavings have good texture. I would kill. <gasps> I was going to marry. I was going to oh. be like, that's not that big a deal. I used to eat sticks. I used to eat a worm on the playground. Well, I guess that would kill you so, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my two cats, I definitely have a favorite, and it's not even close. <gasps> I would. 
I'm not going to lie. I would marry this person. Stop. No, because I appreciate the <laughs> You honesty. hear that and you think, dun, dun, dun. Because <laughs> then I know, I know that this person inherently picks favorites. And if they're marrying me. Oh, you're their favorite. I'm their favorite. You're the cat they like feel, so much. Exactly. They like this pussy a lot. Oh, you better hope. <laughs> I would say I would fuck them because I do like someone kind of opinionated for a moment. But then eventually it's going to make me sad. I'm going to live with this cat, be married to him, see the cat dynamic every day, and it's going to make me sad. Well, you just show more love to the But then I'm cat. no better than him. Well, if I'm... he's taking care of the other cat, you're taking care of the other cat. I have my own cat. And then Shmi comes in and she's fighting with everybody. It's a mess. <laughs> I'm fucking him and I'm going back to my own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I may have been responsible for my best friend sleeping with my cousin's wife. <gasps> my cousin <laughs> was How could you be responsible? <laughs> my cousin was active duty military and I thought his wife and my friend would be good friends together. My cousin still doesn't know she cheated on him. Well, you didn't like be like make out guys yeah you know? that's actually not your fault it's bad that it happened yeah. and it's bad that you're even a little bit part of it yeah but you didn't you just brought you didn't do it you brought a horse to water you didn't you didn't yeah. mean to make a you drink. thought the horse was just gonna look at the river and say pretty yeah you didn't know the horse was gonna get there and start slurping up the river <laughs> that has nothing to do with you yeah so personally i would fuck this person i wouldn't marry Cause like no. I wouldn't want them introducing someone else I love to somebody. It sounds like they're really good at yeah, pairing so people fuck. off. So fuck. I don't want to have to deal with your cousin. Yeah, and not kill. <laughs> yeah, you can live. I already told my friends I dumped him. The only one who doesn't know we're we're not still dating is him. I'm person. gonna kill you because you're still dating someone. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna kill you because you broke up with you broke up with everyone else, but you're not you don't have the decency to tell. The person you're dating that I'm you gonna kill you. Them. I'm, I'm not gonna even giving you. you the pussy. No. Okay. Um, sometimes autopsy photos are hot. No. Kill. Kill. One time my friend cheated off me for an exam and s somehow got a higher grade. Oh. It's impossible for me to ever argue with that teacher about it for obvious reasons, but I'm holding on to that grudge for decades to come. Kill. Kill. Because I'm going to do something like that, and you're going to hate my guts. <laughs> I have a crush on Rumpelstiltskin skin from Shrek. Kill. What do you think? Have you seen Rumpelstiltskin <laughs> skin from Shrek? I can't remember off the top I, of my head. I have to show you. Clearly, you need a refresher. Because once you see this, you'll Because I want to say fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm never going to be Rumpel, so you can't marry me. <laughs> Sometimes you have sex with someone that looks like that, and that's not your fault. That's not that weird of a <laughs> I'm gonna fuck them. I'm killing them. <laughs> Once I snuck into into my work to fuck my BF on the company couch mm. because I hated my boss. Oh, I'm gonna marry I'm you. I'm fucking you. I, okay. <laughs> I guess I do have an Instagram after all. Maybe you come over. <laughs> I recently spent 400 US dollars on rare Furbies. Oh. <laughs> kill. Kill. We're going to kill you because we want to put you out of your own misery. <laughs> I am so glad that we decided that we would have sex with some of you. Yeah. Some of you are sexy. Some of you are marriage material. And some of you... Mm, uh, but yes. Thank you for sending our us your secrets. If you honestly are trying to have sex with one of us, send us a secret and we'll decide right here at this table if it's possible. Yes. Okay, this week I was awarded a little segment of my own. So I kind of am like, it's my podcast. I can do whatever I want. And as we've discussed, one of my interests is pop culture. Another interest of mine is neuroscience. Keeping up with the Kardashians or like scientifically what is wrong with me. But I learned something so good that I was like, I'm just going to take my segment and teach everybody about it. A little fun, just side note about a little neuroscience fact is that 
a really good way to transfer information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory is to teach someone else. Okay, so we gotta go over a little part real quick. There's three parts of the brain. Remember, I'm an idiot. Most of the, this is guesstimations, all the things I say. There's three parts of the brain. There's the frontal lobe, which gives us consciousness and makes us human. Right, There's right. the middle brain. The middle brain is the part of the brain that when you look into a dog's eyes, you see humanity, but when you look into a snake's eyes, you don't. That is because of the middle brain. The third part of the brain, which is the oldest part of the brain, is billions of years old, is the lizard brain. It's like telling you, run, fight, scream, you know, take a shit, lizard brain. The problem is with our humanity is this is part is billions of years old. This is about 10,000 years old. And unfortunately, your frontal lobe cannot communicate with your middle or your lizard brain. Oh. So a lot of times we'll have panic attacks, your fight or flight, lizard, lizard, lizard will be going off. And your frontal lobe that understands you're at the damn airport, there's no real danger besides the one imagined in your brain. You can't tell your lizard brain that with words. But there's a stink. When you comfort a dog, to comfort a dog, you can go, oh, hot dog, I'm so sorry, it's okay. Or you can go, <laughs> my dad's dog's name is hot dog. Or you can go, oh, hot dog, I'm so sorry, it's okay. And hot dog gets the one with the touch because you can communicate with your lizard and your middle brain with touch. So remember, you cannot talk to your lizard brain, but you can touch it. So things like therapeutic techniques where you'll tap on the acupuncture points. of This being like, oh, lizard brain, it's okay. Lizard brain's not gonna hear you. But for some reason, scientifically proven, if you go like this, all oh, lizard brain, it's okay, your lizard brain gets it. Oh, lizard brain, it's okay. We're still sexy. And our ass might not be fat, but it's still worth touching. I oh, think no. it's working. So just think about that. Is this one? Uh, maybe everybody gets their own special acupuncture points too, <laughs> you know? Pick a special one for yourself. I love that. Why is it that our frontal lobe cannot communicate with our middle and, I guess, occipital? Because it's, is, that, is this the occipital? I don't know the technical okay. words. They're like words. I just understand it enough to apply the lessons to my life. So the frontal lobe is so new. It's like brand new. Like the back of your brain is a billion years old or whatever more than that. The front of your brain is 10,000 years old. But it just has different ways of communicating because the frontal lobe uses language and like nuance and oh. all that stuff that like a dog doesn't have and a lizard doesn't have oh. so the nuance we can't apply to the simpler parts of our brain because they don't know what nuance is oh and if you're trying to be like but you're not seeing the nuance to a lizard the lizard's still going to be upset you have to be like baby 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 lizard it's okay <laughs> you know you have to talk to it in a magic way wow. scientifically you have to talk to it in a magic oh. way wow Okay, we are not broke. No, we will slay today. We will slay today. This method where the where you repeat the mantras and tap. When I look it up on YouTube, I'll just tell you what to type in YouTube. Just type like energy tapping for anxiety. Okay. Energy tapping for stress. Energy tapping. Energy tapping for grief. You know, oh. and you can find any tutorial on the on the YouTube machine. Thank you for sharing. That yes. actually just changed my life. And I was so happy to share it. Wow. And you all have to listen to what I said. Go watch someone explain it better probably too. And then tell someone else so it will be in your long-term memory and you'll never forget it. I'm excited for this segment because last week we honored our own controversial opinions. But the Geniverse isn't about us. It's about us. Greater Geniverse. Yes, we honor the Greater Geniverse with, with your controversial opinions. This week, we will be talking about some of your controversial opinions. This person's controversial opinion is that a little bit of mayo tastes mm, great I on already PB agree. and J. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I agree because Why peanut not? butter and jelly is a savory sandwich. And so, right? It's a savory no, sandwich. No, the jelly. Oh, jelly, oh peanut fuck, butter, I forgot jelly. what the J stands for. <laughs> 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 On second thought, um, no, yeah. absolutely not. Mayonnaise in a sweet context. Maybe in the next one we'll try it. But also, you could make a, sometimes I make like a grilled peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. A warm peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It sounds like CIA torture. I'm so sorry. Why is it warm? <laughs> Why is it warm? Because sometimes you want to burn your mouth with goo. 
But in that context, you could, instead of butter, use mayonnaise on the outside. That doesn't even sound better. <laughs> it's not better. It's just more possible to imagine. Okay. All right. This next one. This person said, I think people should be allowed to be a little mean as a treat. Oh. Even the nicest people need someone to snark at. <laughs> Stop. Maybe this is what we could use robots for. <laughs> I think being mean is a slippery slope. You know? Yeah, I don't think you should do it to another person. That's what I'm saying. We, you could, like, yell at your Roomba. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but that baby, is kind of... my Roomba, I would oh, never yell yeah. at baby. <laughs> Maybe, like, the dishwasher. I feel like... Because the thing is, like, when you yell at even inanimate objects, it's usually because they're doing you a thing, right? And then that's a slippery slope for you to, like, yes. take that out on people who are giving doing you a service. Which explains where, like... I feel like that's, like... The, the pinnacle is Karenism, and yeah. it all starts with from, being mean, with being mean as, a treat. as a treat. And why is that your treat? Why is that a treat? Eat a piece of cake. Yes. Work out your dysfunction. Have a chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> There's other treats that are better for everybody. I think breast milk could be a sustainable way to get rid of cow milk. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't plan to to birth a child but if i did i'd be milking myself for as long as i could and i'd be drinking the milk i'd make ice cream cheese cheese butter I, my own <laughs> butter i think it sounds fairly reasonable it's just like the way our society works oh it turned dark fast it's gonna turn dark oh, fast yeah. and it's gonna be like poor women but personally like, for yourself for yourself i think it's a sustainable like you and your family or maybe even your little like community pot you know i would drink my friend's breast milk I would absolutely absolutely controversially yeah i, I think that I might be controversial to some people <laughs> okay okay this one yeah okay i can see this all right next one that was good. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> this one is very simple. This person says cereal goes after all caps milk. Splash. Splish splash. Splish splash, <laughs> motherfucker. This person either A does not clean up after themselves. No. Because clearly, if you were the cleaning up person, you would, you would not be doing this. I hope they're a child. Exactly. Or B, I, I can understand this person. This person absolutely needs to have their cereal as crisp as possible. So much so <laughs> oh. that like the cereal oh, goes wait. so last. I they take like, like three. That. Oh no. oh, no. We're converting you. She's You're like, so convertible. No, no, no. I do like crispy cereal, but that's too far. Just get, just be ready. Get yeah, the just YouTube, be ready. <laughs> have the YouTube playing <laughs> when you have make the cereal. Have the Jennifer's cereal. playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she's eating soggy ass cereal. I, I let my cereal sit. Alone. A long time. Sometimes hours. It depends on the cereal. Special K needs hours to become soft. I don't know what it is about that cereal. It's so I GMO like, I like that it. it's like, yeah, it's a crisp for hours. It's like dog food for us. <laughs> and I like it. Okay, this next opinion. This one, you might not be too invested. I personally am invested oh, in this okay. one. Ron and Kim Possible should have never, all caps, been a couple. And I hate Disney for forcing that relationship. I wholeheartedly agree. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Really? They were like go, best friends. But go off. Yeah, yeah. Go off. Ron, if you don't, for those of you I'm who don't remember. I'm just going to agree with you. Yes. So. Ron and Kim were best friends all throughout the series. And then like in the movie, they confessed feelings for each other, got back, got together. And then in the future, they have children together. Personally, I hated this so much because there's just like, I felt like growing up, there was this big idea. And even to this day, it still works. But there's this big idea that like men and women cannot be friends. Oh, yeah. Ned's declassified. That's a raven. Eddie and Raven, I feel like we should allow these characters to just exist and be friends without that being end goal. It also made like romance the end goal for like all of these types of relationships. And I think it set a lot of people up with very bad views of what friendship should entail, especially a lot of men. Men, yeah. yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with this opinion. I feel like I ghost wrote this. Like, in another dimension. <laughs> She's submitting I, I'm to submitting the Google form. To the Google form. Things you want to talk about. All right, about. this one, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, next one. You will have an opinion on this one. <laughs> okay, good. So this person says, cupcakes and muffins are the same thing. 
Lots of people love cabs. This person yeah. continues on. Everyone needs to just admit that sometimes we eat fun, fruity cupcakes for breakfast and move on. You might oh. not think this is very controversial, but it is an ongoing argument with my friends, LOL. Oh, wow. How do you feel, Joe? You're I the baker, <laughs> the resident baker. I have, well, cupcakes, they have icing. <laughs> they have icing or like a jam inside. They have extra sugar. Sure, the base may be very similar, but it's not. The size is often different. You eat a big ass muffin. And if you, you don't let your your cupcake spill over like that to make a little mushroom, you don't put a crumbly top on a cupcake. You put icing or sugar or powdered sugar. It's different. It's close. It's close. You don't look at siblings and scream be twins. If, I'm sorry, but they're close. Trust me, I want to. I want to live in a world where we openly eat cake for breakfast. So I don't argue with that, but they're different <laughs> by structure, <laughs> by decoration, <laughs> by size. A banana nut muffin is more similar to banana bread than it is to a banana cake. Absolutely. So in that regard, I think this person just like. It's okay to eat your little cupcakes in the morning and just like, <laughs> you just eat a just cupcake, eat a cupcake in, the in the morning if that's what you want. But like to equate the two, I think you said it so well. You know, you don't look at siblings and say that they they should be twins. Well, should we name our favorites? I guess we should name our favorites. What's your favorite controversial opinion from today? It will surprise you. My favorite controversial opinion for today is the mayonnaise with the peanut butter and jelly one because it shocked us. I want to be shocked by your controversial opinions. And that one, I didn't even know where the sentence was going. And I may not agree yet because I haven't tried it. I love it. 10 out of 10. Wow. I, I can pick a favorite for any reason I want. I similarly agree with the breast milk one. That got that one got me thinking. I don't need to be shocked, <laughs> but I do need to have a thought, you know? And when I was going through a lot of these, people sent opinions that weren't, they weren't even controversial. It was stuff like, we should put all billionaires on an island and yeah. have them fight each other. That's not controversial, babes. We, we want it. We want it. We already <laughs> agree with it. We want to hear your... I think we should use mayonnaise in bed as lube. Like we should. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> someone type that and send it to us. <laughs> you know, we really want your raw controversial opinion. And obviously we don't want any bigoted opinions. Keep that to yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're obvious. bigot, don't listen. Tune out. <laughs> but yes, we really want your controversial opinion. This was a really fun time. <laughs> yeah. Those are good. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming to our second episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you choose to apply something to your life. Sure. Thank you for joining us, sending in your secrets, your questions, your controversial opinions. Remember to follow the underscore Jenniverse on Instagram, TikTok. Come find us on YouTube. Listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're everywhere. You can't hide from us. Yes, we will find you. And we will fuck your life. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but really have a good week. Yes, have a good week. I'm Anna. And I am Jill. Thank you for joining us at The, the Geniverse. 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 Slay. Mm.